It is now time to experience the buzz. A podcast that takes an inside look at amazing people doing amazing things. Get ready for some great conversation that will be fascinating, educational, and inspiring. We will also leave room to help small businesses in a big way. Now, here's your host, entrepreneur, Steve Buzzard. Welcome in, everyone. It's another edition of Experience of Us. So glad you could join us on both the audio and the video version of this program. We are going strong as we move into the month of May. And today we're going to steer it a little bit different. I am actually looking to revitalize a podcast that I was enjoying on a personal front. And yes, it's my boys, Tope and Max Buzzard, better known as the Banter Bros. Life is kind of taking them, you know, little different directions. But our goal is to bring all the boys together and then find a way to get Banter Bros going and then give you a taste of that. Okay, so we're going to put everything in the show notes. Of course, I'll tell you more about Tope and Max in just a moment. But now it's time for What's the Buzz? Now, in What's the Buzz? Very simple. I always start with thank you. I want to thank all of you who have been listening in. It is hard to believe that we are coming up on 100 episodes. Never would have thought, but I always told myself if I was going to get into this adventure, it was going to be all in. I want to thank you for all the comments that you guys have given me, uh, whether it's I see you at the local Starbucks here in the area, or you've emailed me, or you're a supporter of the program. Really do appreciate it. I love being able to do this format of Experience the Buzz, and it's so fun because it's truly conversations that I have just wanted to have, but we get to record them and then share them with you. I also know this is a niche that uh, does not exist too much. Where can you get these interviews with people of Sacramento? I think we have done that right here on Experience the Buzz. So again, if you fall in any of those departments, I just want to thank you for your listenership and your viewership. And speaking of viewership, I can't reiterate enough that we now have a YouTube presence. Uh, So when you listen to it, either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or even Google, or you just go to the website buzzerball.com and listen through that format, go to YouTube and check us out there. It's a lot of fun. My producer, Michael Kenobi, does a great job of putting everything together. I'm a visual guy. I don't know about you, but it's kind of fun to listen to a podcast. And then if I really love that podcast, just go to YouTube and see that version and see the people actually talking together. It's kind of cool. So anyways, we have that for you. And we're just trying to provide different avenues for you to be able to get this program. And then, of course, if you'd like to support the program, we love that. We are always looking for sponsors. we got four big ones. Of course, we'll be talking about them throughout the show today. But if you want to jump on board, all you have to do is go to buzzerball.com and just click Become a Sponsor. It's all mapped out for you. You can contact me personally, and I will help you with that. Or you can just make a simple donation or a tip, I guess you could say, uh, to the program. You'll see the Buy Me a Coffee button. That is also on buzzerball.com, and you can make a little donation or tip there. And that is what's the buzz. So again, today we bring the banter bros on. Yes, they're my sons, Tope and Max Buzzard. Thought it would be fun to try to resurrect this program. Uh, Max is up north in Arcata, but he's going to be coming back to SAC. And then I've got my oldest son, Tope, who's getting ready to be a dad, which is real exciting. Uh, So I'm just trying to bring it all together because I really liked what the Banter Bros brought together. And that is an opportunity to get together, talk sports and other topics. And you're going to see that all unfold right now. So enjoy the talking story. It's Max and Tope Buzzard right here on Experience the Buzz. Welcome in, everybody. It is Experience the Buzz, and I am so excited for today's edition. Why? I'm bringing the boys back in. They've been on the show already. I am talking about my sons, Tope and Max Buzzard, and there's a reason for this, is that the Banter Bros podcast, we are trying to renew the spirit of the podcast. And so we thought it would be a good idea to bring it all together talk a little sports, talk a little TV, uh, and those are going to be our subjects tonight, but really discuss on getting Banter Bros back on board. I think people need to know what happened. What happened? Max, 
<laughs> well, it, it wasn't any, you know. Are you trying to start drama. beef here? Or, I mean. <laughs> it's not beef. I just think the people want to know. You had a fan uh, base. It was just life. It was just yeah. life. You know, this guy becoming a dad. And I moved away. Not far away, but I moved away. And, uh, that, you know, the MLB lockout was happening. I mean, you know, it was kind of dry. It was kind of dry in that period of time. And, you know, but if we if we do start this up again, there will be plenty to talk about. All right. So let's talk about that. So for people that don't know the Banter Bros podcast, Tove, kind of give us a description of what the show's all about. Yeah, I was actually thinking about it uh, before we hopped on tonight. Uh, just how great it was. Uh, it was so much fun. I'm very proud of the 10 episodes that we were able to produce. I feel like Max and I were able to put our real effort into 10 great episodes um, of content so far. And um, I think there's absolutely uh, just awesome opportunities right here in the near future to kind of get it going again. And uh, for maybe people that don't know about it, uh, the vision for Max and I was we wanted to just record ourselves basically like we were talking around the couch like we always do and uh, Max and I have always bonded over sports uh, including with you dad and so we just wanted to bring that to life and I feel like we did a pretty good job I think through the first three episodes we were finding our footing but I think towards the end Max and I got into some really good conversations on and off the quote unquote air if you want to call it uh, just really recognizing our our niche and our in our place I was there to kind of team Max up um, so he could give his hot takes and you know I have the journalism background studying that in school so I was kind of able to maybe more so host the show but I think Max really carried the weight as far as the personality goes and Max has great takes, um, as you and I both know, Dad. So that's what Banter Bros is all about. Just the banter, being full and being full of life. And I think we uh, we did a great job through those 10 episodes, and I'm excited um, to whatever extent we get this back going to, to get it going because it was so much fun, and I'm very proud of what we were able to do. Very good description. Max, what would you add to it? Well, you know, yeah, the Banter Bros, the, uh, the origins are... You know, even going on top of what Tove said, is, uh, we have a group chat with our two friends, Nick Hilton and Kirk Langley, and it's called the Banter Bros Group Chat. And it is every single day. Uh, some of us have left at certain times for getting heated at each other. Uh, you really, you can't, <laughs> you just can't make it up, okay? It's, it's true banter. It is everything from... The hottest memes to, you know, the hottest rumors of any sport. I mean, Kirk might have the most knowledge about random Twitter accounts that are apparently a reliable source. That blows my mind. Um, Toph will come in and he'll kind of give the more like, he'll make us think a lot more. Uh, <laughs> you know... With Nick, Kirk, and I, it's kind of just like, whatever the heck's going on, you know, we're just blurting it out, and basically it's, you know, screw Rudy Gobert usually for me, and, you know, <laughs> Nick being a huge, Nick's a huge Warriors fan, so <laughs> who knows where that came from, but, um, yeah, the Banter Bros, uh, that's the origin, us four, but me and Toph, uh, yeah, we have great chemistry, I mean, we're brothers, obviously we we do talk about more than just sports i promise we we love each other we have depth but the sports thing we can talk for for hours and hours yeah and i know i've shared this before when we did our episode together and that was uh when the two of you left that was the like the biggest piece that was missing from me. like watching sports center and mlb network and red zone just wasn't the same so it's really cool that you guys came up with this idea. And by the way, we should note, I am not part of this group chat, but I've told about it many, many times on discussions that take place. Uh, but what I wanted to do with this was, you know, yeah, we're here to see if we can resurrect the Banter Bros. And I know for one of the episodes, you guys had me on and we had our little session. So guess what? We're gonna repeat that so people 
know what the kind of the banter bros uh, flavor is like. It's a little bit different because we are featuring it here on Experience the Buzz. But again, you would then have Toe probably taking my role here. So we'll be kind of flipping around and everything and uh, just having a good time with it. So when we were talking about putting this together, uh, we came up with three subjects and then a bonus. Okay, so we're going to keep it real simple for you. And here are the segments that are going to be coming your way. We're going to kick it off with NBA playoffs because that's the hot thing going on right now. That'll be followed by Major League Baseball as a whole. Great to have baseball back. And if you know us at all, we love baseball and we love our Oakland A's. And we are going to be talking one segment about the Oakland A's. And then our bonus segment has to do with our top TV benches. Okay. I just finished up Ozark last night. I'm not going to give anything away, but we're going to talk about our top benches. So without further ado, let's get in to the NBA playoffs. Of course, I, I mean, we have the teams in the final eight that we expected. What I did is I did a ranking from one to eight with the teams remaining. But before I do that, I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and tee off. Max, start me up on what's your fresh take on the NBA playoffs. I think they're, I think they're pretty awesome this year. Um, there's some great storylines. There's injuries. Which that's not awesome, but that plays plays a huge part into how the whole dynamic of the playoffs can switch in one night. Like last night, for instance, Gary Payton, who unsung hero, kind of you know regular season he showed some he showed some incredible things, but to the fact that Steve Kerr is going to him to guard Ja Morant in the second round of the playoffs pretty huge you know his dad's there one of the best defenders ever gary payton but he uh he broke his elbow last night he's out that changes the whole dynamic i think that leaves the door open for the grizzlies um my hot take is grizzlies will win that one in seven and knock off the warriors i i'm just i'm ready for the warriors to be done done you know it's like they went away for, you know, two years, you know, and everyone's like, oh. But then Clay comes back. Draymond's still, you know, just the best defender ever. It's incredible. Steph Curry, I don't know when he'll ever stop being good. Probably when he starts, like, getting hurt more. But he's been getting hurt. But they're still amazing. So the Warriors are uh, feeling the Grizzlies. Um... And then you got, like, you know, the Sixers who lost Embiid for a couple games. He might be out even more. And they're losing to the Heat. I mean, can we talk about the Miami Heat and Eric Spolstra? We love because, Eric Spolstra. <laughs> okay, he, the NBA did the 75-year thing, right, with the top 75 players and the top 15 coaches of all time. And Eric Spolstra was on the list. And I seriously had to, like, look at the resume because it, it shocked me. I was like, okay, but, you know, yeah, he won with LeBron and D-Wade and Bosh. Okay, and I loved him. But if you've looked at the teams post-LeBron, he's been amazing. The guy gets to the playoffs all the time. He's They got to the finals and lost to LeBron and the Lakers. But that was also the bubble year so there were a lot of different things you know coming into effect but Toph what's your take on Eric Spolstra if you have one I don't know if you thought about it a lot but I just feel like that's a pretty big thing because they're the one seed and I I was like oh they could get bounced but no they seem very legit as a one seed all right, Max. So I have I have a few things before I give you my spolster take. Number one, okay. Gary Payton the second, go Beavs, right? Yeah, go Beavs. Absolutely, go Beavs. And then number two, I'm gonna give a hot take, and Nick Hilton's probably gonna love this, but I like the Golden State Warriors. And I know. As a Sacramento person, with the odd dynamic of Sacramento Kings basketball being god-awful, 
and the Warriors rising and ascending at that time and how awkward it is with little kids loving the Warriors over the Kings because of that generation. I know how awkward it is, but here's the thing. Before Kevin Durant got to Golden State, the Warriors were likable. They really were because they had homegrown guys that they raised up themselves. They did it the right way. And Kevin Durant came along and it completely ruined and tarnished their reputation, myself included. But I remember my sophomore year living with four other guys in a dorm and watching a regular season Warriors versus Thunder basketball game when Steph Curry pulled up from 35 feet like it was a normal layup and watching them and wanting them to be good. And of course, I'm a LeBron guy or was a LeBron guy, which might be a hot take in and of itself. But that kind of came in between as well because they were battling the Warriors so much. And then when Kevin Durant came along, which I already said, kind of ruined it. But I like the Golden State Warriors. I'll actually say this, maybe even a hotter take. The person I like the least on the Warriors is Steph Curry. I don't like how he's grown and changed over time. I think he's a little too cocky. I think he's a little too arrogant. And I, I like confident guys. I'm not, I don't have any problem with it. But the way he holds himself, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. But I love me some Draymond Green, as crazy as his antics can be. I love Klay Thompson. And then I love their new revitalized guys. Jordan Poole, Gary Payton, Jonathan Kaminga as a rookie. The Warriors are likable, Max. And I know that's kind of brutal to hear coming out of my mouth as a Sacramento Kings fan. But... I really like the Golden State Warriors, and I love that series. I probably like Jaw and the Grizzlies just as much on the other side. So I just want to see good basketball in that, that series go to seven. As far as Spolstra, I don't think I have some crazy take on who Spolstra is, except we love Eric Spolstra. He does it the right way. You already laid it out, Max. Post LeBron, look at his success, and it's pretty, pretty impressive. Tope and Max Buzzard are the guests. They are the banter bros. And we are in our first segment talking about the NBA playoffs. Uh, we've got the final eight. I'm just going to give you my one through eight. Dad, uh, I'm, eight. I'm really excited for this. I, I, I can't yeah, wait. You? I can't wait to get diabolical about these rankings. Because <laughs> you, you might get ripped to shreds. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well. But I let's see. Some thoughts, let's so. see. So in the number eight spot, I've got the Dallas Mavericks, okay? Uh, number seven, I've got the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, I, I, I really want the Sixers to at least go to the Eastern Conference Finals, but that injury to Embiid is tough. I was hoping they would be at 100%. You always like to see teams at full strength. Uh, obviously, that's not gonna happen. Number six, I have the Celtics. I just can't figure out the Celtics. I don't, you know what? That I, wow. I just feel like the same thing is going wow. to happen again. That's right. Number wow. five, although this is the team that in my heart I want to win, but I think they're going to get beat out by my team that's higher up in the rankings. Number five would be the Grizzlies. I have them there. Number four, I have the Heat, based on everything we talked about, led by Spolster. Number three, I have the Suns. I've got the Bucks coming in at number two, and I do have the Warriors in my top spot. Um, because here's what I'm going to say about here's what I'm going to say about the Warriors, Max. I know this is hard uh, because I know what you're thinking. Oh, you guys are on a team, you know, you <laughs> teaming up, right? Those, those are the thoughts going through your head right now. This is a classic Max response when it's the two on one thing. But I'll tell you this: <laughs> the Warriors. I think I'm at a point now where I appreciate them. Like, when I was in the midst of it, and they were winning those titles, it, it kind of had that Giants feel to it. Like, oh boy, here we go again, right? Oh, everybody's a Warriors fan. Amazing. Okay, I just didn't get that. But I think as a basketball fan, I can step back and say, wow, you, you do have to appreciate what we have been able to see from this group. And so that's just kind of where I'm at. Kings are awful. And I don't know when it's going to get any better. And it's not to say that I like the Warriors. I truly want the Grizzlies to win. And if you had my second and third spot, I'd go Bucks, Suns, Heat. That that's who I want to win. But if I'm telling you in my head, it's it's I think it's going to be the Warriors. 
Okay, only only bone to pick with your rankings okay. is Boston at six. I mean, okay. they just absolutely took it to the Bucks. And I don't know when you made these rankings. Probably today. You know what? I made them today. Okay. So that's a little bit of a loophole for me. But okay. Boston, in my mind, is ahead of Miami in the rankings. I know the seeds are different, but when you look at the trajectory of both of their seasons... Miami, I think, finished 53-29 and 29 in the regular season. Boston had the awful start, one of the best turnarounds we've seen in a very long time, and they absolutely dominated the Brooklyn Nets, who we know all of their tizzies that they have on their team and in their organization. But They swept them. Yeah, they swept them. And games were close in games one and two, but games three and four – they pulled away, so that's my only bone to pick. Dad is I think Boston at yeah. six is much too low when they're a serious title contender. Okay, well let's finish up this way with this segment. I mean, I'm sure everybody wants to know if you're going to banter about the NBA. You know, what's your pick? You know, who's in the finals? Who wins it all? So Max, we'll start with you. <sighs> okay, well, <sighs> Toph and Nick and Kirk. And I don't know if I've talked to you, Dad, but I I've I picked the Grizzlies to get to the NBA Finals, and I picked the Bucks. And so my original prediction was Bucks over the Grizzlies in six games. I don't think that's going to happen, if I'm being honest, because watching the Warriors, I yeah, I hate them, but I know they're really good um but my prediction now is the phoenix suns against the milwaukee bucks wow okay a a rematch a rematch except this year i'm going with the suns okay all i want and i don't think i would have said this like maybe three years ago all I want in my lifetime is to see Chris Paul win an NBA Finals. I think he's better than Steve Nash was. Wow. <laughs> he is a guy that I need to see hoist the trophy because I think he's he's top three point guard of all time. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I know he's in the top five discussion and people have been hesitant to put him higher, but... He still gets a lot of love, deservedly so, but I saw an interview with him where he was on a J.J. Reddick's podcast, and, you know, J.J. was like, Chris, would you have any regrets if you didn't win an NBA Finals? And he said, you know what? I think if you asked me two years ago, I would say that I wouldn't be able to live with myself, but now... Like, having a family, having young kids, seeing them grow up, seeing, like, what life is all about, and just him having these experiences, he said that it shifted into, like, no, he realizes that he's had a great career, and he's had a a bunch of great experiences, but the NBA Finals will be the cherry on top, and he still says, that doesn't mean I'm going to retire. I think I can play for five more years. I totally agree. So... I and Monty Williams is is awesome. Like he's a great coach. Coach of the year. Um I got to go with the Phoenix Suns. Okay. I, I think that's a great pick. You're looking at the rematch. I have no problem with that. What about you, Toph? I'm going to keep it the same as Max except I'll switch up the winner. I think the Warriors and the Grizzlies are going to beat each other up in that series. I think Phoenix will take care of Dallas in five or six, the most six. Dallas essentially had the perfect game the other night. Lucas scored 45 or whatever it was. They hit like 18 threes, and they still lost (laughs) by seven to the Suns, who, you know, didn't play necessarily their greatest game. So that's kind of my outlook on the Suns. I think they're going to make it out of the West because Warriors, Grizzlies will beat up on each other. 
and then the Phoenix Suns will be able to take care of whichever team gets to the uh, conference finals. As far as the East goes, the Bucks have a tall order with the Boston Celtics. If they can get through the Celtics, which I believe they will, they'll get to Miami, most likely, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Take care of Miami. Uh, it'll be a dogfight. Miami always comes in battles and scraps, but Milwaukee out of the East, and then it's an official changing of the guard, folks. Giannis won his title last year. We talked about it. Giannis is the new face of the NBA. If he goes back-to-back, it's an official, put it down, stamp it, official changing of the guard. Giannis is the face of the NBA with all these great young stars coming right up behind him, including Ja, Tatum, Devin Booker, Luka. The NBA is in good hands. Uh, We didn't really know where it was headed with the deterioration of LeBron and KD and some of those guys, but it's a changing of the guard, and I think, in my prediction, that speaks volumes when Giannis goes back-to-back. All right, and I'm going to go uh, Bucks over the Warriors. I kind of feel the same thing. Love Giannis. They're doing it without Chris Middleton, and it's just really showcasing how great of a player he is. Um, and, yeah, I think that would be a classic NBA final. I, I'm going to say it, though. I'm with Max. Max and I, I think it was just you and I, right? We saw the Grizzlies and the Kings, like, early in the season, and we're yeah. like, okay, this team is fun to watch. Like, it... Desmond Bain to you me. You love like, Desmond I was like, Bain. Okay, I, I love, love Desmond Bain. Love that guy. So I'm really going to be rooting for the Grizzlies. And, of course, we have a good friend, Eric Castletine, who's a play-by-play. So that would be kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. So there you go. That is the take on the NBA. Well, I hope you enjoyed that first segment there, talking a little sports, a little sports with the Banter Bros, my sons, Tope and Max Buzzard. Time to thank... Uh, two of our four sponsors, the original two, talking about R5 Stitch and Print, Troy Rousey, good friend and owner of R5 Stitch and Print, told his story in episode 25, so you can go back to the archives and check that out. Website is r5print.com, their phone number 916-454-3773. What do they do? Well, they specialize in screen printing and embroidery, featuring high precision stitching and large format printing. I have been able to see the machines myself. They are high tech. And boy, the work that Troy is able to do, it really is the key to their success. Uh, Here's the deal. If you have any ideas in mind, you can contact R5. They have an in-house graphic designer and they will sit down with you. They'll actually build a portfolio for you. Troy has done that for me on a couple of items. I'm very grateful to him. So again, when you're looking for anything screen printing, and embroider. In fact, I just reached out to him today. I said, hey, just curious, Troy, do you guys do stickers? Yes. So I'm like, hey, I need some stickers uh, for my upcoming Buzzard Ball Summer Basketball Camp. And he said I could take care of that. So really, unlimited access when you are dealing with R5 Stitch and Print. Thank you, Troy Rousey. And then we want to thank Pit Boss Jerky. Of course, I'm talking about the Pit Boss himself. That's Joe Green. He is featured in episode 26. So you go back to back. Uh, website it's going to be launching soon i know i've been saying that for months joe i'm waiting i'm waiting all right but here's what you can do if you want to order any of this incredible beef jerky and it is incredible with a capital i get on the order board by calling this number 916-769-6807 how many flavors does joe offer how about 14 of them including a flavor that is named right after this program that's right It is called Experience the Buzz. The latest flavor is White Bulls Barbecue before ETB. There is a very popular one called Island Teriyaki. My favorite before Experience the Buzz, because it's got the namesake on it, is Raspberry Apple Chipotle. You got Herb Smoke, Big Heat, Keto Mix, Little Heat, Sweet and Smoky, Honey Gold, Sweet Summer, Pit Boss Original, and Pepper Garlic. I think that adds up to 14. Again, if you'd like to get your hands on some of that great beef jerky, Order board, 916-769-6807. Joe Green will take care of you. So again, thank you, R5 Stitch and Print. Pit Boss Jerky, let's get back to the conversation. More banter with Tove and Max Buzzard right here on Experience the Buzz. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode of Experience the Buzz by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. It means everything. Now, back to the show. 
This is Experience the Buzz. We're going to keep it right here. Why? Because now we're going to shift gears and go into segment number two. And from basketball, we talk baseball. I mean, baseball in general, just being back for the full 162, it was a little dicey there, like you said, with the lockout. But you know what? Uh, they did what they had to do. And just being able to have MLB Network on every single night, I absolutely love it. Fellas, whoever wants to go first, it's all yours. The MLB is back. Max, take it away, bro. Yeah, well, baseball, uh, I'd say easily is my favorite sport. Um, it was my favorite sport to play growing up. Probably, like, right in front of basketball. I love playing basketball, too. Um, but there's just something about baseball. Um, and the MLB lockout, it felt like a piece of my heart was taken away. It's like every day I get up to read Twitter to, you know, read the what's happened with the negotiations and all this stuff that just, you know, us fans were like, okay, Okay, please, can we just get somewhere to where we can have a season? And I'll not forget, uh, hopefully no one at my work watches this, but I was at my job at yard duty. Probably shouldn't have had my phone out. But <laughs> I read my phone and saw that they had struck a deal to come back. And I think I audibly screamed and kids were wondering what was wrong but I told them no things are going very well so you know baseball's back um it's a sport that many find boring to watch sitting on the couch but if I'm chilling for a couple hours I'd, I'll gladly put on a baseball game and it helps because my roommate Luca he is in our fantasy league now and so he pays attention to all his guys Absolutely. So he's always like, Max, did you see what happened today? And sometimes I'll be like, no, I didn't. So thank you. And we're always watching baseball together. It's it's a great time. So, But this is interesting, and I, I want to throw this in because for all the baseball fans out there, you know, MLB Network we love. But, Max, you're really big on, and I think Tope would probably agree, um, you don't like the quick pitch. You'd rather go to the YouTube version of the highlights. Can you explain that? Yeah, quick pitch is just aged poorly. Um, I agree. Um, they used, they used, they yeah, right. They used to give in depth highlights, but now they do the Sports Center thing where they mention one thing that happened, and it wasn't even the most then, important like, thing of yeah, the game. Yeah, and then like one of the pitchers had like eight shutout innings, and you had no idea. So, uh, if you are someone who you know is working during the day, you can't catch the games, you miss the East Coast games, whatever, go to YouTube, just look up MLB uh, on YouTube, and they do condensed games, which are about eight minutes long, and it doesn't skip anything. Even like a double play, like you'll see it. And personally, I enjoy that, because I do want to see like the important things and why it was a close game or, you know, who hit a grand slam or whatever. So YouTube highlights for MLB are the way to go. Safe to say. That's a hot take right there. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, I, I love the YouTube highlights, by the way. Big YouTube guy, yeah. Yeah. by the way. Uh big YouTube guy. I always just throw it up at work and just kinda, you know, go to work and, you know, watch whatever I want. Some highlights, some golf content, whatever we got. <laughs> but uh yeah baseball i'm glad it's back i think that would have been a huge huge loss for baseball i know we talked about it at some point dad i don't know how they would have recovered if they didn't get this off the ground uh, could have been very detrimental yeah. um to their well-being and their success as a league as an organization and you know i, I don't want to put a damper on anything but it is really tough when our team is not involved for me uh baseball is obviously something very special in my life share an incredible bond with both of you guys with my grandpa um i played it growing up i loved it um but i just think that the league while it has young budding stars i think it has a long way to go as far as 
drawing in the audience and drawing in the fans. And yes, it is a, you know, our nation's pastime and it's a fabric, I think, of our country and a lot of people's lives. But I'll be honest, I mean, right now, beginning of the season, right, with NBA playoffs going on and other things, you know, you know, with the stage of life I'm in, I'm, if I'm going to tune into something, it's probably the NBA playoffs. Um, not to say that I don't love baseball and I don't, you know, want to be tuned in and want to stay in it. Um, but with our team clearly going a different direction, it's sad. It's hard. It's hard to stay involved. And um, there's just a lot of other things that are going to pull your attention. And so I guess that's a hot take in and of itself. I don't want to put a damper on this. I don't want to put a damper on this segment, but I want to be honest with you guys. I mean, Max is talking about, you know, pulling out his phone at yard duty. So I need to kind of bring this around and, you know, tell you guys that it's been a little bit of a struggle. So I guess over the podcast form, I'm, I'm telling you guys that I'm a little down on baseball and you guys know, taking the paternity leave on fantasy this year, that that's definitely uh, playing a factor, but yeah, I guess I'm just venting on uh, experience the buzz right now. Yeah, we could tell right there. And, and that that was tough news. That was tough news that came down the pike. That uh, yeah, we had to talk about it. I had to text you guys and you know really ask yeah. you because I didn't want to lose that, and I, I don't think I ever will. But yeah, paternity year for me on fantasy baseball front. But I think that's important because you know with this it does represent like where each of us are in our life, you know, right? And so and and that's okay. Uh, because it's different for each of us. When we go back to, you know, I know we're going to get into the ace and stuff. Like, I can't say I was a huge fan until I saw the excitement that you guys had. And then I, I jumped on board and I was excited about that because I was a fan as a kid. But once you get to adulting, then, you know, other things do take over. So I'm very appreciative of kind of renewing uh, that fandom that I had for my teams. And, and you guys are a huge, huge part of that. So with fantasy, like it was huge for me. Like I went way over the top. I usually do two fantasy leagues. I'm doing four and it's insane. Okay. So, you know, we have our kind of our family friend, you know, ESPN league. Great. A lot of fun. Uh, last year's winner is what? Craig? Craig was the no. winner, right? You were a guy. Wait. No. Oh, I was? Yeah, you beat Nick by one. No, Nick. No, no, Nick. Nick Sorry, he, he oh, he whole dude, yeah, Nick. Yes. Nick is gonna roast me. Yeah, yeah, Nick yeah he will. Nick yes. by yeah, one. Yeah, so Nick Hilton, Nick's the winner. Beat me by one point in the championship last year. So there's that league, and then Max got me back into what we call our auto new league, and this one's intense. So it's, intense. It's intense. That, that's all I can say. It's intense. You bid on players and stuff, and I'm I, I'm having a rough go. I'm trying to climb the ladder. <laughs> So, but it's going all right. And then I always do a couple paid leagues. Uh, so this year, what I thought I would do is I do head to head and I do some rotisserie. So it's been kind of nice. But again, when you have four teams, it's like you're rooting for everybody. So it's just like, it's almost like a no win situation. So I'm hoping <laughs> maybe one team will come out of it. And we'll do okay. So <laughs> playing the numbers game. But that, that's, yeah. But I, I wanted to ask you guys, like, you know, is there a team or a player that has like stood out to you this year so far. You know, we're just a month in. You know, Yankees and Mets are doing well. Dodgers are doing well. Oh, the Giants are so good again. You know, <laughs> it's like you're right. So, is there a player or a team that uh, has stuck out to you, even with you, Tope? I know you. Have yeah, a lot. no. Um, the person that sticks out to me is Gabe Kapler of the San Francisco <laughs> Giants. He's just a phenomenal coach, a phenomenal manager. He has great game plans. He really knows when to use his players. He really knows. He's really jacked. Yeah, he's he's kind of like a silver fox. And that, I think, really yes. just people love him for that. Um, you know, he's got the, the mental side of the game down a pat. So um, that's going to be my sarcastic answer, Gabe Kapler. I'm glad you added the word sarcastic in there. Yeah, oh, just in goodness. case the laughs weren't telltale signs. Yes. But yes. That's yes. going to be yes. my answer. Here's the deal, Giants fans. I, I, okay. I'm just Don't protect them, Dad. Don't protect there. them. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not going to protect them. Here's the deal. <laughs> this is a dangerous I have thing. I have mad respect for the people that I know that are diehard fans. I I get it's it. It's just like you could probably count on one hand how many you know 
that are diehard. Yes, and I know who they are, okay? <laughs> I know who they are. But I also know who are not true Giants fans, okay? <laughs> and that's where I get irritated, and I'm sorry. I need to let go of that because it's the same thing with the Warriors. It's, it's that same mentality, right? And so me and the boys, we do get sarcastic about it. So now kind of the running thing, and we'll just put it out there, especially like Max and I will just be like, oh, my gosh, the Giants are so good. So like they're going to win it this year. You know, <laughs> you know, last year, I can't believe they didn't win. I mean, yeah. they were, you know, my, that yeah. team was so good, Literally. and they were good, and yeah. I couldn't explain it. But anyways, and maybe it's jealousy. I don't know. I, I'm not exactly – I don't think it is. It's not. But it's – no, it's definitely not jealousy. I'll throw no, it out. Okay, there. and obviously – I would love if the A's were the team that won three World Series championships. Okay? But you know what? Going back to the Warriors, Clay Thompson had a great quote in an interview, in a press conference. He said, all those fans that have have been with the Warriors before me, Steph, Draymond, Coach Kerr got here, those are the fans that I ride with. He said, those guys... He said, those guys... Those fans that hopped on after we won our first title, I could give less of, you know, care. Really? About. Yeah, he said I. He said I don't like that. Now I need yeah. Brandon Belt to come out and say <laughs> yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Isn't Clay Thompson yeah, guys, an Ace fan? I I think so. Also, his brother played for us at one point, Trace? and I think that kind of solidified it. I think Clay likes the A's more, but uh, yeah, that's the like that. It's what has been in my head about the Giants. And sometimes it's hard for me to say the right words because I yep. like I dislike them so much that I can get emotional and say I hate them and blah, blah, blah. But it goes deeper than that, which is a little scary. Um, <laughs> Bill King, a great announcer for the A's and for the Bay Area. Um, in his book, it was said that... Uh, other broadcasters thought that he enjoyed knowing that the Giants lost more than when the A's won. And, and I'm like, once again, yep. a perfect yep. portrayal of just like, that's how I feel, truly. And it'll never, never come to me saying, oh, but like the Bay Area is being represented. I don't care. I really don't. Niners. Giants, bye bye. That's all it is. Max, do you okay, do you want the, the do you want the hat? The A's. The yeah, hat, yeah. The A's Giants That's, hat. That, yeah, I've been looking in the mail. Dude, every day I'm gonna get that it. for you as a gag gift. <laughs> so okay, so okay, so one more thing, and I just want to clear this up before we go right into talking about the Oakland A's, and that is, it, I mean, it should be. A's Raiders, and I know they're in Las Vegas, and it should be Niners Giants. The wacky thing. So I just met someone who's an A's fan and a Niners fan. I had never heard that. Of course, your guy's a good friend, my acquaintance as well, Kirk Langley, loves the Raiders and the Giants. Yeah. I don't get that one either. Yeah. Um, has Kirk ever explained that? I haven't. I don't know. Like, I know we've asked him. But I feel like usually it's like in a heated moment to where it's not even really talked about. It's just it's like a fair question, though. Yeah, no, it definitely is, and I know he knows that that's not normal. He definitely knows that. I just am yeah. not sure where or how it came to be. If I'm being honest, do, I don't. Know. And do people in Sacramento realize that Oakland is closer than San Francisco? Well, like, <laughs> yeah, I just, I just love that, like. Oh well, it's San Francisco. It's closer, or like no, or, it's know, not closer. Yeah, or just like the like, you know, <laughs> we can you know we can get into other things. I just yes, I know. There's so much we can actually do a full segment on just this stuff. The isms, the isms. Okay, so let's just move in, Dad. To yes, I don't want to go back too far, but the team That's that okay. has surprised me this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. The Los Angeles Angels. 
I I hate them. But for me, there is a level of respect there that I don't have for the Giants. Uh, I mean, they won the 2002 World Series against the Giants, which is awesome. Uh, But I think they're actually playing up to their... I mean, they have a two-time MVP, an MVP, Anthony Rendon. They have, like, some pitching now, but... Trout looks healthy and he looks like the best once again. So the Angels, Joe Madden, not a big fan anymore. I used to like him when he was on the Rays because, you know, he did the quirky stuff, but he's a little too quirky. I mean, the guy intentionally walked Corey Seager with the bases loaded this year. That was strange. And then they ended up winning, but they gave up four runs in that inning. But it's just like, okay. But anyways, the Angels, respect. And by the way, I do want to give kudos. This just happened actually last night. Dusty Baker getting win number 2,000. Represent. Uh, awesome. You know, he's, he's, he's from this area, and uh, there was talk on the MLB network. I don't think he's won a title. So it's kind of that whole thing like you were talking with Chris Paul. I don't oh, think as a manager. He lost to the Angels. He was the Giants yeah. manager, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And he lost so, last year. You know, just, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Hall of Fame manager, 2,000 wins. Uh, Miguel Cabrera getting a 3,000 hits. Uh, yeah. That's been an early thing. We've had a combined no-hitter already happen. So, you know, baseball is just – I love just kind of the, the cool things that happen within the game. And, and there are some good young rising stars. And uh, with that, we're going to segue into the Oakland A's. And I'm just going to go ahead and read a list. Can I read a list for you guys? Sure. Sure. I compiled this list just for you guys. Here we go. Just tell me what you think the theme is. Yeah, you'll probably already know it. Bob Melvin, Mark Canna, Starling Marte, Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, Sean Manaya, Chris Bassett, Jake Diekman. Did you have to do that? <laughs> well, I need – okay, so here's the deal. We love our A's, okay? But for someone on the outside that doesn't follow baseball – I think it's very important to understand what a true fan is all about. This is absolutely devastating. Like this, we we have had players, player or maybe players that have been traded away. The one that always sticks out for me is when Yoannis Cespedes got traded to the Red Sox. Absolutely devastating, but, you know, was it the right move? You know, it didn't quite work out. This is devastation. This is throwing a nuclear bomb on our team. And, and just watching it unfold was just absolutely tough. That's that's all I can say to it. Please take over. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, that's the answer, Max. It's it's tough. It, it, I think, you know, I can always kind of have a clear head with you guys as you talk it through. You know, with, you know, the two people that I share this bond with, with the A's the most. I trust in David Forst. I trust in Billy Bean. We always have. We always will. Um, We'll probably be in contention in the next few years. I mean, we have no record of showing that we won't. Maybe it takes three, four years. But it's more of just a coming to grips moment and this one like you said dad it it was a nuclear bomb uh it kind of sucked even worse because the lockout (laughs) and you know max was texting me and he's like texting us saying guys there's rumors just absolutely swirling around that when this lockout is over it is fire sale and it's tough it's it's not easy as an oakland ace fan right now it's not easy to come to grips with Hey, we're trading away everybody trying to get assets back to build something uh, for the next window. And it's just sad because you could argue that was our most promising window that we just had. And it all fell apart last year, which is weird. Usually we can turn it on in the later months of the season, at least get into that wild card game and give ourselves a chance. But we couldn't. Then the lockout happened. Then everybody left. And that's kind of how the cookie crumbles in Oakland. And it's tough. It's tough to accept that. And Max, and Max, truly, we talk about windows, right? The windows, and we just—it's not like this one. Like it slammed 
shut. Like we are starting all over, more so than I think that you guys have ever experienced. There have been some lean years, but we were kind of joking when we saw like the opening day roster, you know, like looking at the lineup as like, oh man, that's tough. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the deal. Like they, the month, their first month, they were 10 and 11. And actually what we saw wasn't too bad. And that spoke to the system, which is now led by Mark Kotze. And it's interesting. I was looking at what was the projection of wins? What were the odds up in, you know, Caesars or whatever? 68 and a half wins. And I can clearly say they're going to win more than 68 and a half, like just because of the system itself. But uh, Max, what's your take? Yeah, I don't know. This one's harder for uh it's it's uh it's just crazy because if you've been following you know that uh Oakland and the Athletics have had a multi-decade battle of trying to find a permanent home in Oakland and they've been able to do it at the Coliseum but it's just been you know temporary leases basically for the last two decades of okay i guess we'll just extend but we need to find a home san jose got shut down because the giants have some land rights in san jose and didn't want the a's to move there thank you giants so that's another point of why the giants thing goes deeper is because they treat the a's like a little kid when it's our owner's fault it's not it's not the people playing. It's not the fans. It's not the coach. It's not the general manager. People think the general manager has, you know, say in what money we give out. It's like, no. The owner, multi-billionaire who hasn't cared about the A's one for one moment. And it's this last, after the lockout, Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, Sean Manaya. Am I missing someone? I mean, oh, Chris Bassett, we, yeah, Bassett. I mean, really lit. those guys yeah. who were traded. It's right. it was that was really hard, and this is the year that the the A's will basically figure out if they're gonna build at Howard Terminal in Oakland, or if they're gonna leave. And of course, the place that they they most likely would leave to is Las Vegas, of course. Um. It hurts. It is painful. And I know it's it's sports, okay? It's it's not the end of the world. But everyone has passions, right? Say if I took away some passion of yours or put that thing somewhere else that you couldn't access it, wouldn't you be upset? That's a great way and of then putting what? it. Would I say you're overreacting? No. I would respect the fact that you can't access that thing. That is what it would be if the A's left Oakland. For us three, for so many people that we know in our family, for so many fans that we've been able to meet over the years in Oakland, it's it's so much more than a baseball game. It is seriously like that would take that would take a piece of my heart because that we i just love the A's man it's it's about my grandpa his legacy um he played in he was the Kansas City A's farm system in the minor leagues and then they moved to Oakland shortly after that and you know it's just it's something that would be really hard and uh, it's not – I don't think of it like, oh, it would be much better business move to move to Las Vegas. It's like, no, I'd rather see a product that gets overturned every three to four years if they're in Oakland. I'm not going to lie. I would. Because we have those windows where we can win. And if we have the right GMs to make those things – like we have the highest value at those times and yeah, I don't care if we stay in Oakland. I don't care. We'll have the windows. 
But if we leave, it'll crush me. And I think that's what this year is going to be about. It's like just seeing what's happening with the stadium stuff. Um, sadly, I wish we could watch a team that would win. But, you know, now, Dad, they're 10 and 15. I think they're on a six-game six game losing and, streak. So And they've you, all you been see. tough losses. Yeah, tough yeah. losses. <laughs> you, you, you just see... Okay, that first like month was like, oh, what? We could be like flirting with 500? Probably not. You, the product on the field is the result of what happened in the offseason. So, you know, I forever an A's fan, and I will go to games this year. I will not, you know, pick a second favorite team to like, you know, that's – it's tough. Well – and this this uh, speaks to where we are in life. Uh, the, the other hard part for us was this is the first year since 2013 uh, that we haven't been season ticket holders. And, uh, You're not alone, tough, Dad. Yeah, I know. And, and that was a tough call to make. And we have to point out... Like you're hearing, people are hearing things about people, you know, kind of protesting of going to the games or boy, not protesting, sorry, boycotting going to the games. And I know people look at that from the outside and go, oh, hey, they don't have crowds anyway. You don't understand. It's like it does, it does go deeper and it does speak to the owner that really has not cared about the team. And yet you have all these other people in place who have worked so hard, like you said, uh, to try to put a winning group on the field and I think our big thing was why couldn't they have just waited one more year it's like we could have had this team together one more year but the dominoes started falling once Bob Melvin was given kind of that green light to take that job in San Diego and so call it what it was that that started everything and then it just kind of all fell apart now with what the team has right now I, I'm good with Mark Kotze I think I you know he, he rivals Gabe Kapler in terms of looks and being jacked and everything. <laughs> He's got the silver fox thing going. I don't know. I'm, um, not, I'm Shel- not a Giants homer, but I think Kapler's got Kotze on the silver <laughs> fox <All> meter. Right. <laughs> you know, we still have Frankie Montas until he gets traded. Uh, Sheldon Noisy has been a great story. And, and Christian Pache. 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 Yeah. yeah. Pache. So, you know, great, hey. Great defender. Yep, we're just going to live with what we've got, uh, go out to the games when we can, and continue to be A's fans. But like Max spoke to, uh, a big piece of this, too, is whether they get that Howard Terminal site. Very big. We're hoping for people like, you know, Dave Stewart or Ricky Henderson, all these A's greats. And you know what? We have to throw in there, too. Not only were we devastated by losing the people I, I said on the list, but you go back to last year, Roy Steele. Dick Callahan, Ray Fossil. Like three Man, that's... legendary voices that it's tough. And Tope, I know you were making a comment when we were watching Kuiper, uh, you know, that he doesn't seem the same. He doesn't. Like it's, it's tough. He doesn't. I can only imagine what he's going through. I mean, I'm sure he's gone through his, you know, ups and downs, and we don't know him personally, but. Yeah, you can just sense uh, for listening and watching him so much over the last decade almost. Uh, when I really became an A's fan and really locked in, you, you get to know people when you watch that many hours of baseball. And you listen to Glenn Kuyper and Ray Fossey. And Glenn just, he seems a little more crass. Not as a, that's not a, uh, that's not a take on him or a knock on him. Yeah, it's just... He seems a little more crass. He seems a little more like he's kind of flippant, just kind of saying funny things off the cuff. And not to say that's bad at all, but um, he's got a new partner in there who kind of is like that. We love Braden, but I can only imagine what Glenn's feeling having to be reminded of Ray. And you know, just a year ago, he was sitting in those seats with him doing the games and so sad, but now he's not. But Max, safe to say, we love Brody Brazil and we yeah. love Dallas Braden. And, oh, yeah. you know, Shooty Babbitt, throw Shooty Babbitt in there. It's like yeah. there's some great personalities. Bip, Dave Stewart. Bip Roberts. Bip Roberts, yeah. yeah. Bip, Dave. And, I, and I'm going to and I'm gonna say this, too. I have never forgiven Greg Papa, who was a longtime A's and Raiders guy, and he went to the other side. That yeah. doesn't fly. I, that doesn't fly. I wonder, 
Like, I wonder if there was, like, you know... I wonder if the Raiders, though, were like, hey, we're moving on, you know? I don't know the full story, and we probably won't, but I agree wow. that, yeah, the Papa thing, he's the... Isn't he the Niners guy now? Yeah. Like, that blows so. my mind. Like, that how could you get into the space, the proper space to do that? I wouldn't feel right. Yeah. I, I just wouldn't well, feel right. maybe this. Doing that. Yeah. Maybe that. All right. Rolling right along here on Experience the Buzz. Want to thank our other two sponsors. We got four total. By the way, if you want to come on board, just go to buzzerball.com. Become a sponsor. Everything is listed for you. These two, very appreciative. Little Whale Swim School, the premier swim school in Sacramento, led by their owner, Anya Hall. She is featured in Episode 6. Great story. I would encourage you to check that out. They are located at 4106 El Camino Avenue, right here in the capital city. You can check them out on their website. They've got it all outlined for you at littlewhaleswim.com. They're all over social media, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. Just go to Little Whale Swim on that. And why are they the premier swim school in Sacramento? Well, two big things that stick out. Number one, they're year-round, okay? Not just the summertime, year-round. And they have a custom-built indoor facility, which means what? You're going to have a nice, warm pool. It's going to be good temperature. And they have got classes for babies. They've got classes for kids. They've got classes for adults. And here's the other part. If you're interested in becoming an employee of Little Will Swim School, a great summertime job, I would imagine. Make sure you contact Little Whale Swim. Dial in. They start out at some good hourly rates. And, of course, a lot of fun helping kids learn how to swim and get those strokes in place. So there you have it, Little Whale Swim School. Big thank you to Anya Hall. And lastly, I want to thank Matt, the mortgage guy. That's Matt Boucher. He is featured in episode number 28. Their website, MT mg.com or you can call me 916-802-9291 what's his specialty well lo loans and refinancing in fact a personal story matt was able to help me and my wife with the refinance took about a month to get through but you know what their team was with us every step of the way and that was what was stuck out really big to both Kristen and myself we were very thankful got us to the finish line we were very happy also, Matt offers tools on the website like the Home Purchase Qualifier for those wanting to purchase a home. I know the market is tough right now, but I'm going to lead you to something that's going to help you with that. They also feature the refinance rate checker. They got today's mortgage rates. Here's where Matt really shines. In fact, he's gone national because of this. You Mortgage has brought Matt on because of his presence on YouTube. That's right. He's got his own YouTube channel. It's called Matt the Mortgage Guy. You can look it up. He does a live chat every Monday at 6 o'clock. He's a YouTube star. Over 500 videos, over a million viewers, and he offers content on what? Mortgage education, real estate, and personal finance. You have to check it out. It's got a lot of answers for you. That live chat is big because he will address the issues that are going right now, as I know it's tough for people to buy homes, but Matt can find a way for you. So Matt Gouget. Anya Hall, two more sponsors right here on Experience the Buzz. Let's get back to our final piece of the conversation. We're talking Oakland A's baseball. And, of course, we're going to do our top binges on TV. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode of Experience the Buzz by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. It means everything. Now, back to the show. Gentlemen, we have talked NBA playoffs, we've talked MLB, and we've talked our Oakland A's. I'm going to finish out with a quick bonus segment. I was thinking about this uh, after finishing Ozark last night. Again, we're not giving anything away here for anybody who hasn't finished any particular season, but I wrote down my top five TV benches. So for you guys, wow. I was just wondering if you could share what, which ones you know just come to light for you going to be a top three, no particular order. Max will kick it off with you. All right. I got my notes here. Um, nice. So I'll go. I have five here. Okay. Binges, TV show binges. Right. Right. You're going to go five to one, yes? Uh, okay, yes, I will. I'll go five okay. to one. Um, in fifth, I've got, I've got Family Guy. 
because I can just turn that on and watch and just let it go for hours. That's um, nice. That's it's nice. not. It's more of like, okay, I'm going to turn my brain off type thing. It's not like I'm real involved, you know. <laughs> it's like, okay, Peter makes the same joke every time, but it's still funny. Gotta love Stewie. Um, I know you love some Family Guy, Dad. You'll you'll turn. It I like Family head. Guy. It's funny. <laughs> Mom will say anytime I try to turn it on, she'll like, Steve, yeah. can you? You're. Come on. It's all right. Okay. Um, she gives me a hard time. Yeah. Uh, four. I've got. Um, the show called Community. It's really okay. funny. It has a, uh, um, it's got Childish Gambino in there. Donald Glover. Uh, he's great. Uh, how am I forgetting this guy's name? He's from. He does the Christmas Vacation movies. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Yeah, he's yeah. in it too. Um, it's kind of it's from the creators of Rick and Morty. People know that show. It's really funny. Rick and Morty. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Uh, I love that show. <laughs> My friend Travis put me onto that one. Um, in third, I've got The Office. Okay. I, I knew that would be on the list. Yeah, you know, got to get some, you know, the Christmas specials. You can go forever on that. And it's the, another one where you can turn on any episode. Yeah, and, and laugh. Um, yeah. Number two, I got uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That show's hilarious. Um, Charlie Day, he's probably my favorite. And the cool he's thing fun. about that that show is Charlie's wife is in it as a pretty like main character. And then uh, the guy who plays Mac is married to the girl who plays D. So they like they have great chemistry and they're all like best friends, so it's really funny. Dennis nice. is my favorite character. Um, and in number one, it's a show that you watch and probably wouldn't like watch over but me and my Lu my roommate luca binged it it is succession okay it's on hbo max it is about wow uh, it's amazing a every episode it's just like you gotta keep watching cliffhanger wow. is it a is seasons. it a drama it's drama okay. but it's pretty funny too okay the, the characters are great um Macaulay Culkin's brother plays a character. Uh, there's some great acting in it. Uh, it's three seasons. The first two seasons uh, it happened before COVID, and then they like suspended filming until like not too long ago, and it just got released like a couple months ago. Great show. It's it's awesome. I heavily recommend. All right, go through that list again, one through five. Succession. Okay. Succession, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, The Office, Community, Family Guy. I like it. Great list. Toad, okay. what about you? Uh, I don't know if I wasn't on the text thread or on the email thread about this segment, but I'm not <laughs> prepared. So, and it wasn't discussed. So I'm just going to give my take. I don't, and I'm not good. Max knows I'm not good at just like coming up with a list. So I'll just tell you most recently I rewatched Stranger Things. And oh, nice. second time around, I liked it even more. Season four comes out in two parts, much like Ozark, which seems to be a direction that Netflix is heading in. I like that. Uh, I think May 27th is the first succession, and then July, come July, they're going to release part number two. Uh, I'm a big fan of Stranger uh, hey, Things. Hey, Toph, Toph, do you like when they release it, like like you're talking about with Ozark, mm -hmm. they release all seven episodes, then the next seven? Yes. Or do you like it the week by week? I think there's a time and place for both, truly. Okay. I I, okay. I like kind of going back old school and waiting for the episodes. I think I think that should be on a producer. I think a producer and directors of the shows should make that call because people make shows now for binging. Because Absolutely. yeah, because it's yes. like a long form movie. But if you're wanting to go more of the cliffhanger keep people on the edge of their seat i think it's smarter to do episode by episode keep people waiting and here's the thing about stranger things that when i went back and watched it 
I really grew an appreciation for it. Number one, the kid acting is unparalleled. I don't think we've seen that from a lot of other shows. I know back in the day, maybe early 90s with some of those shows, there was probably some really solid kid acting. But the kid acting, we haven't seen that in the modern day. And it was phenomenal rewatching it. But here's the thing about Stranger Things. Netflix, they're about producing content, right? They just want to get shows up there. And to their detriment, sometimes they produce trash. I'm just going to call it as it is. Trash. And what they do is they produce shows and leave you on a cliffhanger that feels pretty fickle. You're like, oh, I'm probably going to fall into this, but it's not that good. And then, you know, the credits roll and they have that next episode right in the bottom right corner. And it just starts playing and you're like, okay, I'm in this. And then you're three episodes in you're like, it really wasn't that good. That's not the case with Stranger Things. Stranger Things, their cliffhangers, their ways that they were able to leave you on the edge of their seat was unparalleled. And I've watched some Netflix shows in the past, and then I watched Stranger Things, and I was like, wow, this is really good. It's meaty. It's got good depth to it. The music and the vibes and the aesthetic is so great. Um, it's nostalgic, even though I never lived in that time period. And that is something that I think they've done. And I'll find myself walking through a store and a song comes on and I go, oh, that's in Stranger Things. It's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy a little bit, right? Guardians of the Galaxy yeah, has the yeah. same vibe and music is a great way to pull everything together. So um, don't have the list for you, but Stranger Things, very pumped for the next season to come out. Um, also... Just a big note about shows and props to Ozark. A good show knows when to end. And Breaking Bad did it right, I thought. Ozark seems to be doing it right, not carrying on the story too long. And I think Stranger Things is going to be done after season five. And I just think it's smart. I think it's smart for shows to not drag on. You got to keep it alive. It's also good to be like, okay, hey, this is done. This is finished. Ah, I might want more, but this is where the story ends. So. Big, big proponent of Stranger Things, if you haven't watched it yet. Okay, that was good. That was a great take on Stranger Things. It's interesting because my top five, totally different from you, Max, uh, but I think you'll appreciate some of the selections I have. So at number five, I will say probably, to me, the best ending to a series and all the ones that I'm going to name, and that's Sons of Anarchy. Now, Sons of Anarchy, you know, it gets a little little racy and stuff, but the ending was the best. Again, I don't want to give anything away, but Sons of Anarchy is my number five selection. Number four, Kevin Costner and Yellowstone. Love the Yellowstone. I'm, I'm big on the Yellowstone. Uh, number three, Better Call Saul. Uh, it's interesting because of Better Call Saul, which is the prequel to Breaking Bad, so they're taking a character uh, that is in Breaking Bad and developing its own story, is that it started off real slow. But where we're at right now, it's amazing because what it's doing is it's tying, it's just tying everything in, which is absolutely beautiful. Number two, I have Ozark, and number one, no doubt about it, Breaking Bad, which I think is the greatest binge of all time. I think I've watched it now twice through. I wouldn't mind going back a third time. The characters are just out of this world. And that's why I'm loving Better Call Saul now, because they've done a good job of bringing back some of those characters that you haven't seen. And obviously the big news is, is Walter White going to show up in Better Call Saul? My guess is, yes indeed. I've and seen, it's probably going to happen. I've seen confirmations that it's going to happen. Like, yeah, I've, there's no doubt. And Jesse Pinkman. I've read both. So the... the Oh, really? So, see, I yeah. wouldn't know. Like, it would make sense for me that Walter White would make the... Uh, it, it, he would make an appearance, but I'm, I was trying to figure out how Jesse Pinkman well, would because... Dad, I thought... Isn't it that he meets Jesse first? He does. Because Jesse, like, has all the trouble with what he's... He gets in trouble a lot. So, you I know think what? That is, Jesse okay. introduces Walter... He sense. knows the guy. So like when, Jesse knows the guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's all good. It's all so good, when man. it happens, when it happens, it's going to be great. Because it's oh, going to be, yeah. I love those moments 
you know, when you go, yes. And, and, and Better Call Saul has done a lot of those, especially with those characters that they bring back to life where you're going, oh my gosh, I can't believe yeah, this. I don't think, I don't think it'll be corny, you know, I think it'll be. No, good. no, 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 yeah. no. And, you know, so all these binges, you know, take them or leave them. Those are our list. Uh, guys, do you have any final takes before we wrap this session up? Max? I mean, I'm just, I would love to get the banter back, you know? So we will continue to draw up contracts and see what we can do here. <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, I'll be moving back to Sacramento very soon to be able to be with these guys. So, yeah, there's it's nothing better when we can just talk to each other. Sports, TV shows, whatever it is. Had a great time. I agree. Same, Thank yes. you. Max. That's awesome. Same goes for me. Yeah. This was a lot of fun. Uh, if anybody's wondering where I am, I'm in my closet. So, uh, you know, sitting down on a poof. Uh, so that's me. But, yeah, a lot of fun, Dad. Thanks for providing this platform. Um, it's always great to get back on and talk. And, yeah, I mean, obviously big life moments coming up for our family with the introduction. A little bit. Yeah, with the introduction of my daughter, which will be Steve Buzzard's granddaughter, Max Buzzard's uh, niece. So, It'll be awesome to have that new new time of life. And yeah, I'd love to be able to banter it up. Well, and this is one of the many reasons I love my boys. Yeah, just having this opportunity. I thank you guys. I know we've done it a couple times now, but uh, Banter Bros, uh, those episodes, those past episodes are still available. And we'll put a link to Thanks that. To so we're going to keep yep. that alive. Yeah, Max paying at $5.99 a month, man. Keep going. <laughs> gotta keep it up there baby there you go all right so that's experience the buzz hope you guys enjoyed the episode tof max buzzard i am steve buzzard have yourself a great rest of your day peace well there you have it uh good stuff right there that was a lot of fun i knew it would be it's always fun talking with my boys and talking a little sports and also getting our best TV shows in there for you. So hopefully you can check those out and see what's going on. Uh, so another episode of Experience of the Buzz is in the books. Uh, we've got a lot of great guests that will be coming up. Very excited to bring them your way. Uh, should tell you, if you have a guest in mind, uh, please reach out to me. You can do so uh, via email is the best, scbuzzard at gmail.com. And we'll look forward to getting that guest on the program. I plan on doing this for a long time. A long time. So we are releasing these things on the weekly. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed the episode. And of course, let me see. When I go right here, uh, yeah, I, I know what it is, the tagline. That's all I got for now. Talk to you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for joining Steve this week on Experience the Buzz. Steve would love to hear from you. Leave a review or contact Steve directly with any questions at scbuzzard at gmail.com. To see the other adventures of Steve Buzzard, be sure to visit buzzardball.com.